Okay, so I start tomatoes from seeds when I can or when I have the time. I love to do that because it gives me a jump on the gardening season. I get to start gardening in February when I put seeds in the ground. But a lot of times I'm on the road or I'm busy with the show, so I don't start from seeds. But I buy seedlings or starter plants. And these days I have such great selections at the garden centers, at Home Depot, you've got the Bonnie plant line. It has a lot of the classic heirlooms. Those are the ones I love to grow because they have that great history and all that wonderful flavor. But um, because of my schedule, more often than not, I'm taking the easier route and the time-saving route, and I'm just picking up the plants at the nursery. So the best time to plant tomatoes in a home garden is after the risk of frost has passed in the spring. So here in Atlanta, that's April 15th. So I would not put a tomato plant into the ground until that last risk of frost had passed. These plants are very frost sensitive. They don't like the cold, so they want that time to go by. Then I plant my tomatoes and I get those in the ground so they can get a good jump on the season. My goal is six, six weeks later to hopefully have my first tomato. As far as varieties of tomatoes, there are nearly an infinite amount of varieties. A lot of them are being rediscovered today that have been around for hundreds of years, but they kind of gotten forgot about. But now they're making a resurgence. Those are the ones called heirloom varieties. They have a story, and typically they've been around for more than 50 years. But those are the ones I love, just the allure of the story and the flavor intensity of them. Sometimes they're a little more challenging to grow because they don't have built-in disease resistance. So you need to be a little more um, ambitious with taking care of those plants. But you can also buy hybrid varieties, which are modern breeds that have some of that disease resistance built in. And, and for a new gardener especially, that may be a better choice just because it maybe gives you a little head start and maybe a few less challenges that you're not ready to take on as a new gardener. So tomato varieties come, tomato varieties are basically called indeterminate or determinate. Indeterminate varieties are like a vine. They keep growing and growing and growing all through the season and they can't support themselves. Now you could let those grow along the ground, but not many people do that just because it kind of creates a new set of problems. So I love to grow indeterminate varieties and stake them or trellis them in what I call the ultimate tomato cage which is all around me here. They're, it's basically livestock panel that I cut to size, formed a square around the plant, and then the plant grows within it. And it's just, for me, the perfect application. Now, if you don't want to stake or use a cage, you could just use a piece of bamboo, which is super easy, and there's other methods. But if you want to make it really simple, you can go with a different variety called indeterminate. Those are ones that don't get past a certain height, so they stay shorter. And there's even varieties today that just are happy in a container because they stay really small. So you don't have to think about uh, containing them at all as far as maintaining their upward growth. So sky's the limit on what you can do. For me, I like to grow the tall ones and stake them. Tomatoes are heavy feeders. They like nitrogen, they like good nutrients in the soil. As an organic gardener myself, the only things that I do are focus on the health of the soil. So when I'm building out my garden beds or my containers, I'm looking for great soil. And these days that's so much easier because you can go to the garden store and buy organic soil or you can buy a, a blended soil. miracle Grow makes a huge line of organic and inorganic soils and add that to your garden. And then, you know, you want to make sure that you water it in properly. And so Tomatoes, in addition to the nutrients in the soil with compost, I use malorganite as an organic fertilizer that's got nitrogen in it. I put that in there. And then the water, you gotta have the water in there to distribute the nutrients, and you wanna do that gently. So I'll get a nozzle like this that has lots of choices on it. This is called a cannon by Orbit, but I can get a soft, gentle flow. I can get a wider path with this. So this just makes it really nice to control that watering and keep the water off the foliage you don't want to get tomato leaves wet other than what Mother Nature delivers because that will keep your plants healthier. But the other thing that can give your plants a really head a good head start is by digging a proper hole for tomatoes. Tomatoes are the only plant that you can dig really deep. 
So I'll use a soil knife like this. This happens to be a Hori Hori knife that Fiskars developed with Home Depot that lets me get deep into the hole, you know, six inches or more. So I'll do this, I'll dig way down, and I'll literally pull the bottom leaves off the tomato plant up to the last two leaf buds. So by the time the plant that starts off like this high in the container goes into the ground, you only see that much after I've planted it because everything else is underground. But the reason I do that is because along the stem, there's little fibers, but those fibers underground, when they come in contact with soil, develop roots. And so now I have a much larger root system to take up all those nutrients that I put into high quality soil. So that's the trick there. The other thing that you can do as an organic gardener with nutrients, you can buy bagged products. I love it that there are so many more options available today. This didn't exist a few years ago, but because of the demand for organic gardening, companies have come up with products to serve our needs. But the other thing, even with a healthy garden, and my garden is organic, you're going to have some challenges with pests and diseases, but you don't want to introduce man-made chemicals and you want to be environmentally responsible. But you even have choices for that. You can use essential natural oils that do the job of pest control, but they don't hang around in your garden very long. So uh, that's really good. That's a good environmentally way to deal with those challenges if you choose to take that route. So feed the soil with high quality soil, use organic inputs like you can find in the store today, plant it deep, keep the foliage dry with a good watering implement, and you're going to have great success. So when a tomato grows, there's an offshoot that happens between the main stem and the leaf, and it's called a sucker. It's kind of at that 45 degree angle. Now there's two schools of thought. A lot of people feel that you need to pull those suckers off because it, it pulls away the energy and the production value from the plant producing tomatoes. But the fact of the matter is it really doesn't. In fact, it, it generates more opportunity to pull in more nutrients from the sun by leaving the suckers there. But the problem with the suckers is it increases the mass of the plant. You know, each of those suckers creates a new branch. And if you don't pull them off, you have a much thicker plant and inside of a tomato cage, it could get highly crowded and you want good air circulation. So as a rule of thumb, if you have the time, it probably is a good idea to pull off those suckers because you create better airflow within the plant. But if you leave them on and you just want to take the easy path, there's nothing wrong with that and you're not going to diminish the value or the, or the volume of the fruit that you get just because you left the suckers on. So the tips for growing the best tomatoes in town is to stay on top of it. You have to be vigilant in the garden with tomatoes. They're tricky to grow all the way through harvest and keep the harvest going because they are very susceptible to pests and especially diseases. And I'm even talking about the ones that have some disease resistance bred into them. So what I do is every day if I'm in town, I get out there in the morning and I inspect my plants. And if I see spotting or discoloration, I remove those leaves and get them out of the garden because it's those diseases that form on the plant leaves that will spread to the rest of the plant if you don't do anything to remove them. So the best thing that you can do to ensure great success through the harvest is to be proactively out there, engage with your plants and remove any trouble signs before they get out of hand. Be proactive in your garden and you will have a great tomato harvest. And for more information, you can easily go to gardenclub.homedepot.com. Lots of resources there, articles, and other gardeners that you can communicate with to get all the help you need.